to welcome to all of you Shiksha 360. And today, basically, we will discuss very, very important topic of the <coughs> LRAB and AFB also. Clear? So basically, this topic is common to both. Clear? So it is basically chapter number 17. <coughs> That is company accounts. Clear? So in that, basically, first of all, basically, they have given information regarding the company and chapter number 55 and 56 of LRB. Clear? That is basically also same. Clear? Content is almost same. Clear? Almost same. So basically, treat this chapter as a common to both. Clear? So let's start our discussion on the company. <coughs> so in the LRB, basically, you will expect two to three questions. Here, basically, you will expect <coughs> one question, basically, from our today's session. Clear? Because here, it will constitute basically two chapters. <clears throat> okay, so basically we will expect questions according to that. So let's start our discussion. So first of all, capital of the business, clear basically capital of the business depends upon the form of the business organization, clear. So basically capital, <clears throat> like partnership, it is different. For proprietorship, it is different. <clears throat> For company, it is different. Clear? <coughs> basically, for all these, basically, we will require capital. Clear? But the name is different. Clear? Here, basically, proprietorship, that is basically only single owner's capital. <coughs> Here, partner share. Clear? So, in this way, there is a little bit difference between among all these things. Clear? Among all these things. There is a, li <coughs> there is a little bit difference among all these things. Clear? So capital of the business basically depends upon the form of the business organization. So there are different forms of the business organizations. Clear? Basically, there are different forms of the business organizations. Proprietary forms are suitable. Clear? Basically, proprietary form that is basically where single owner. <coughs> proprietary forms are suitable basically where the capital requirement is very small. Clear? Proprietary firms are suitable basically where the capital requirement is very small. So when the business expands, clear basically when the business expands, one person may not be in a position, clear. <clears throat> when the business expands, basically one person basically may not be in a position to attend to all the function of a business, clear basically when the business expands. So one person basically not may not be in a position, clear basically to attend all the function of a business such as production, marketing, finance and so on, clear. <coughs> So under these circumstances, <laughs> a new form of business organization takes place. That is the partnership form, clear? That is basically when basically we are expanding our business, clear? So basically we can say that basically <clears throat> we need business partners, clear? Basically we need, sorry. So basically we need business partners. Clear? So under this circumstance, basically a new form of business organization takes place. That is the partnership form. So partnership, basically it is a relationship. Clear? So what is partnership? Basically it is a relationship between two or more persons. Clear? <coughs> so what is partnership? Basically partnership, basically it is a relationship between two or more persons <coughs> who have come together. Clear? So basically partnership, basically it is a relationship between two or more persons who have come together basically to share the profits of a business. Clear? who have come together basically for what basically to share the profits of a business carried on by all or any one of them acting for all clear. <clears throat> so partnership basically it is a relationship between two or more persons clear basically between two or more persons who have come together clear basically who have come together to share the profits of a business clear basically who have come together basically to share the profits of a business. <clears throat> carried on by all or any one of them basically acting for all clear sometimes basically in the partnership form <coughs> as we have already discussed in detail regarding the partnership in LRB. so basically in the partnership basically some are <coughs> sleeping partners also clear basically they have capital under in the firm partnership firm but they are not working there clear basically but they are not working there clear that is basically known to be as the sleeping partners clear <coughs> so next one so capital requirements of the business clear basically capital requirements of the business can be met clear so capital requirements of the business basically can be met by the persons or the partners who have come together clear so capital requirements of the business basically can be met by the persons or the partners <coughs> who who have come together clear 
so managerial functions clear so managerial function basically can be distributed among the partners so under the partnership firm clear so under the partnership firm the liability of the each partner is unlimited clear <clears throat> so under the partnership firm very very important clear so the liability of the each partner it is unlimited clear so please remember that under the partnership firm basically the liability of the each partner is to be unlimited clear further in the case of dissolution of the firm clear further basically in the case of the dissolution of the firm <clears throat> dissolution if the firm assets clear basically we can say that basically if the firm assets are not sufficient to basically discharge its liabilities clear basically in the case of dissolution that is basically winding up clear we can say that basically if the firm's assets basically are not sufficient clear basically if the firm's assets basically are not sufficient to discharge its liabilities clear so private property of the individual partners clear even in that case basically private property of the individual partners basically can be applied clear <clears throat> or basically can be joined to clear the firm's debit clear basically private property of the individual partner basically can be applied basically to clear the firm steps clear so partnership form of business basically it is also not suitable where la where large investment is required clear because sometimes <coughs> it is very difficult clear basically for the partnership basically to contribute that much large capital clear so basically what they will consider now basically next one that is the company so from where the journey starts basically from the proprietorship we will move towards the partnership and we will move towards the company clear so partnership form of business basically it is also not suitable where large investment is required clear basically where large investment is required example setting up of a cement factory fertilizer plant etc clear like example setting up of a cement factory or a fertilizer plant etc clear so this gave rise clear so basically further this gave rise basically to a new form of business clear so this gave rise to a new form of business organization that is known as a joint stock companies clear so this gave rise to a new form of business organization that is known as the joint stock companies clear basically what it is known as the joint stock companies clear <coughs> so now let's us discuss regarding the definition and the types of company clear so now let's discuss regarding the definition and types of the company <clears throat> so first of all basically we will discuss here basically what is a company clear so company basically it is an association of persons clear basically company it is a association of persons who contribute money clear <clears throat> or money works basically to a common stock and uses it basically for a common purpose clear so basically what is a company a company is an association of persons clear basically a company basically it is an association of persons who contribute money clear <clears throat> contribute money or basically money worth to a common stock clear who contribute money or a money worth basically go to a common stock and uses it basically for a common purpose clear <clears throat> and please remember that basically in the case of the company registration it is to be must clear registration it is to be must like in the case of the firm there is not necessary registration clear but in the case of the company registration is to be must clear so it is created by the law and it is affected by the law clear <clears throat> So if any problem arises, so basically we have to go to the court also. Clear? Basically we will go to the court also. So it is a legal person. Clear? All these are one point five mark question. Clear? So basically it is created by the law and it is affected by the law. Clear? So it is a legal person also. <clears throat> Just as much as an individual. Clear? Basically, but no with the physical ex existence. Clear? Company is a legal person. Legal person, but have no physical existence clear basically but have no physical <coughs> existence further section 2 subsection 20 of chapter of the companies act 2013 defines a company as a company clear basically defines a company as a company incorporated under this act clear defines as a company basically incorporated under this act or under any previous company law clear <coughs> defines a company basically as a company incorporated clear basically defines a company as a company basically incorporated under this act or under any previous company law clear under this act or under any previous company law so now further 
now what are the features of a joint company clear now we have to discuss basically what are the features of a joint stock company so in the examination directly basically they are asking basically point five more question which one of the following <coughs> is the features of a joint stock company or which one of the following is not the feature of a joint stock company clear so you have to remember that <coughs> so what are the features of a joint stock company clear first one that is incorporated association clear <coughs> First one here that is the incorporated association clear. So a company basically it is a registered body clear. Basically a company what is company basically it is a registered body of the individuals. So according to the companies act 2013 clear. According to the companies act 2013, it is compulsory to register a joint stock company clear. A company is a registered body of the individuals and according to the companies act 2013 clear. According to the companies act 2013, it is compulsory to register a joint stock company clear so basically it is compulsory to register a joint stock company next one that is artificial person clear company it is an artificial person clear it is an artificial person basically created by the law it is different from its member <clears throat> so it can enter into the contracts clear basically company can enter into the contracts purchase and sell the properties can sue and be sued upon, clear, can sue and be uh, sued upon, that is basically legal action. <clears throat> like in the case of the partnership firm, clear, basically if anything happening, so basically firm partners are responsible for that also, clear, basically here company is sole responsible for that. Even a member can enter into the contract with the company, clear, in the case of the company, even a member can enter into the contract basically with the company clear can enter into the contract with the company like in the partnership firm partners are basically not able to do the contract with the partnership firm but here in the case of the company <coughs> the members of the company clear basically can enter into contract with the company clear can enter into contract with the company clear so first feature that is <coughs> incorporated association second one that is the artificial person clear Third one, that is the perpetual succession, clear? Perpetual succession, like in the case of the partnership firm, clear? If any one of the partner basically expires, <coughs> so the firm has to be dissolved, clear? So the firm has to be dissolved. But on the other side, basically a company has a perpetual succession. So death or insolvency of any shareholder, clear? So death or insolvency of any shareholder does not affect the existence of the company, clear? So death or insolvency of any shareholder basically does not affect the existence of the company. <clears throat> Fourth one, that is the common seal, clear? Common seal, that is stem. <clears throat> as the company is an artificial person, clear? As the company basically it is an artificial person created by the law, it cannot sign its name, clear? It cannot sign its name. <clears throat> so it has a common seal, clear? Because we can say that basically like, even in the bank also. <clears throat> Manager sign basically will valid only when they affix the stamp of the organization. Clear when they affix the stamp of the organization, otherwise, basically that sign basically will not be valid. Clear otherwise, that sign basically will not be valid. So, stamp is to be mentioned here. Clear stamp is to be mentioned there. Clear so, common say that is as the company basically it is an artificial person <coughs> created by the law, it cannot sign its name. So it has a common seal clear. So it has a common seal basically on which the company name is engraved. Clear? It has a common seal basically on which the company's name is engraved. So the common seal basically is, is treated as the company signature clear. So that common seal basically it is treated as the company signature and it is fixed on all the important documents <coughs> clear. And it is basically fixed on all the important documents and contracts as per the resolutions clear. And it is fixed on all the important documents and contacts basically as per the resolutions passed by the board clear as per the resolution basically passed by the board clear so companies act 2013 required common seal clear so companies act 2013 basically required common seal basically to be a fixed on certain documents passed share by <coughs> certificates bill of exchange etc clear bill of exchange etc clear so companies act amendment 2015 basically has made the use of common seal optional clear earlier basically it is compulsory now basically optional so such documents basically may now instead by may now instead be signed by the two directors 
or one director and a company clear or one director and a company clear so now basically there is a little bit changes clear even if they are not able to affix the stamp clear if fix the stamp so basically that document is to be signed clear so that document is to be signed by at least two directors clear so that document it is to be signed by at least two directors Okay, so please remember all these things. Clear? So please remember all these things. So basically, we till now basically we have discussed four features of the joint stock company. First one that is incorporated association. Second one artificial person. Third one perpetual succession. Fourth one common seal. Fifth one limited liability. Clear? Fifth one here that is the limited liability. So the liability of the members. Clear? So the liability of the members of the joint stock company. Clear? The liability of the members of the joint stock company basically it is limited to the face value of the shares basically held by them. Clear basically how much that is? It is basically limited to the face value. Clear basically limited to the face value of the shares held by them. Clear limited basically to the face value of the shares basically held by them. <coughs> Next one. Separation of the management basically from the ownership. Clear separation of the management basically from the ownership. Clear even though the shareholders are the true owners. <coughs> Like if any person basically has 10% shares, clear? So we can say that basically this is one of the shareholders, clear? Even if any one person has 1% or 0.10%, clear? So they are also the shareholders of that, clear? <coughs> even though the shareholders are the two owners, clear? Even though the shareholders are the two owners, they do not participate in the management of the company, clear? Even though the shareholders, clear? Even though the shareholders are the two owners, so they do not participate, clear? They do not participate in the management of the company, clear? They do not participate in the management of the company clear so they elect their representatives they elect their representatives basically which are to be known as the board of directors clear so they elect their representatives clear basically which are known to be as the board of directors clear which are known as the board of directors clear so please tell fast it is no clear that is even though the shareholders are the two owners clear but they do not participate in the management of the company <coughs> so basically who will participate that is the representatives clear Elected by them, clear, elected by the shareholders, clear, basically, they represent the company, clear, that is basically, they are to be known as the board of directors, clear, or they are all are the members of the board of the directors. <clears throat> Next one here, that is the transferability of the shares, clear, transferability of the shares, clear, so the shares of a company basically are freely transferable, clear, the shares of a company basically are freely transferable, subject to the restrictions, clear, the shares of the company basically are freely transferable, Subject to the restriction <clears throat> placed on transfer of private limited company shares. Clear the shares of the company basically are freely transferable. Subject to the restriction basically that is placed on transfer of private limited company shares. Clear placed on transfer of private limited companies shares. Clear that is transferability of the shares. <coughs> Next one that is the separate legal status. Clear eighth one that is the separate legal status. Clear. A company has an independent legal status. Clear, basically, a company has an independent legal status, and as such, the shareholders or the owners. Clear. A company has an independent legal status, and as such, the shareholders or the owners are not liable, basically, for the acts of the company. Clear, and as such, the shareholders or the owners are not liable. Clear, basically, are not liable, basically, for the acts of the company. Clear, are not liable. Basically, for the acts of the company. Next one, that is the large membership. Clear. Next point, basically, which we have to discuss here, that is the large membership. Clear. Very, very important. Clear. Basically, from here, one question is must. Clear. Basically, from here, basically, one question is must. Even in the PPV, clear. Basically, they will also ask question. Basically, from that, clear. Because this is the number of membership. Number of members. Large membership. <coughs> so, basically, a company. Clear. A company. Basically, it is owned by a large number of. Members clear basically a company basically it is owned by a large number of members. So in the case of private limited company clear. So basically in the case of private limited company clear. So I will write it here. In the case of private limited company, the minimum number here is to be two, and maximum here it is to be two hundred clear. So in the case of the private limited company clear. In the case of the private limited company, the minimum number here is to be two, and the maximum number here it is to be two hundred. <laughs> On the other side, in the case of the public limited company, clear basically in the case of the public limited company, the maximum number 
of members is to be seven. Clear? So minimum number. Sorry. In the case of the public limited company, the minimum number is to be seven, and there is no maximum limit basically on the number of members. Clear? And there is no maximum limit. Clear? In that basically there is no maximum limit basically on the number of members in the organization. Clear? <clears throat> On the number of members, basically in the organization, basically there is not any limit in the case of the public limited company. Clear, basically in the case of the public limited company, there is not any limit on the maximum number and the minimum here is to be seven. And in the case of private limited company, the minimum number of members is to be two and the maximum number of members is to be 200. Clear, it has to be 200. So the last point here, basically, which we have to discuss that is <coughs> minimum paid up capital. Clear. Minimum paid up capital clear basically for public private company clear for private company basically which having minimum members two and maximum members 200 clear it basically for that basically the minimum paid up capital it has to be rupees one lakh mm -hmm. and for the private public limited company basically it has to be five lakh clear basically it has to be five lakh and that is basically as per the companies at 2013 clear and that is it is also basically as per the companies at 2013 clear however the amendment of 2015 clear basically however the amendment of 2015 has done away basically with the, this requirement clear <clears throat> as you know that basically companies are clear basically amendment in 2015 clear so basically as however the amendment of 2015 has done away basically with this requirement and it is at the company's discretion clear now basically it is at the company's discretion basically to set its paid up capital clear? now basically it, it depends upon the Company's discretion clear basically to set its paid up capital clear to set its paid up capital clear so that is basically minimum paid up capital clear so that is basically comes under the minimum paid up capital clear so here basically we have discussed all the ten features of the companies act clear basically all the ten features of the basically joint stock company clear all the features of the joint stock company so please tell fast if you have any doubt any query regarding that please respond fast please tell fast it is clear to all of you. Definitely, basically, you will get questions from that in the examination. Clear. All are to be straightforward points, but definitely these from these points, basically, you will get questions in the examinations. <clears throat> now, next thing, basically, which we have to discuss here, that is the different types of the companies. Clear. Basically, different types of the companies. Clear. So, basically, there are different types of the company. Clear. So, basically, there are <coughs> different types of the companies. Clear. So, they may be classified either on the basis of their incorporation clear so basically they may be classified either on the basis of their incorporation or on the basis of their ownership and the life or on the liability of members clear so basically there are three types of the classification first one basically they may be classified either on the basis of the incorporation second one that is ownership third one that is the liability of members clear third one here that is the <coughs> liability of the members clear so now let's discuss one by one regarding all these points so types of the companies clear here first one that is based on the incorporation second one that is basically based on the ownership third one that is basically based on the liability clear based on the liability so based on the incorporation that is basically chartered company statutory company registered company and foreign company clear so basically based on the incorporation basically we have three types of the company first one is the chartered company second one is the statutory company third one is the registered company fourth one here that is the foreign company clear <coughs> Fourth one here that is the foreign company. Clear. Next one that is basically based on the ownership. Clear. That is based on the ownership. Basically, we have private company, public company, government company, and holding company. Okay. So based on the ownership, basically we have four types of the company: private company, public company, government company, and holding company. Clear. So that is private company, public company, government company, and holding company. Clear. So whatever basically I am discussing here, clear this table. This whole table basically it is to be present under the chapter number 56 of LRAB. Clear that is based on the incorporation, based on the ownership, and based on the liability. Clear basically based on the liability. That is company limited by the shares, company limited by the grantees, company with unlimited liability, and subsidiary company. Clear. So, first one that is company limited by the share second one that is basically company limited by the grantee third one that is company with unlimited liability fourth one is the subsidiary company clear fourth one is the subsidiary company clear so all these companies 
regarding information basically we have to discuss in the next session clear basically we have to discuss regarding all these types of the company clear that is based on the incorporation based on the ownership and based on the liability clear basically we have to discuss in the next session clear so chartered company statutory company registered company foreign company <coughs> based on the incorporation that is on the registration ownership clear basically who is the owner clear private company public company government company holding company so here that is liability company limited by the shares company limited by the guarantee company with unlimited liability or subsidiary company clear company with unlimited liability or the subsidiary company clear so all these types we have to discuss in the next session along with basically what is the difference between the partnership and the limited liability company clear so what is limited liability company and what is the difference between the partnership and the limited liability company clear <coughs> Along with that, basically, we have to discuss in the next session, very, very important, that is classes of the share capital, clear, classes of the share capital, clear. So all these points, basically, we have to discuss in the next session, clear. All these points, basically, we have to discuss in the next session, clear. So thanks to all of you for joining this session. And definitely, please try to remember all these points. I will provide you the slides also. You will straight forward questions, clear, at least two questions. You will get in the LRB, LRB clear, third paper, basically, what we have cover to declare that is basically in the legal paper and one question basically in the accounts paper basically from that clear because along with the numerical portion clear they will ask theoretical portion also in the examination clear <coughs> so thanks to all of you for joining this session